Thank you for joining the Society of Thoracic Surgeons 8 and 8 series. My name is Corey Allwart, and I'm the Chief Perfusionist and Assistant Professor of Surgery at the Mayo Clinic in Arizona. I will be joined by Dr. Rita Molesky to present the topic hypoxemia during venal venous ECMO. Welcome. My name is Rita Molesky, and I'm a cardiac surgeon and an Associate Professor of Surgery at Yale University. Despite the ECMO circuit, hypoxemia can occur during veno venous ECMO and can be caused by multiple factors and include circuit patient interaction factors, circuit factors in and of themselves, and patient factors. And these will be discussed in this presentation. During VV ECMO support, a fraction of deoxygenated venous return blood is sent through the ECMO circuit to an oxygenator, which adds oxygen and removes carbon dioxide. After gas exchange, this blood is then sent through the outflow cannula to the right heart, resulting in a mixed venous, venous saturation in the right heart that has a much higher oxygen saturation than you would expect in a patient not on VV ECMO support. This mixed blood is then pumped by the right ventricle to the lungs where further oxygenation may or may not take place depending on the patient's respiratory function. There are, however, some inefficiencies of VV ECMO support that are of significant consequence to the patient. The first inefficiency is a VV ECMO shunt, which is the portion of venous return to the right ventricle that bypasses the ECMO circuit entirely and is therefore not oxygenated by the ECMO circuit. For example, if a patient has, has an ECMO circuit flow of only three liters per minute, but a cardiac output of six liters per minute, the ECMO flow to cardiac output ratio reveals that only half of that patient's blood is being oxygenated by the ECMO circuit. The lower the ECMO flow to cardiac output ratio, the lower the saturation in the patient's right heart and presumably in the systemic arterial blood as well, depending on how much gas exchange is provided by the lungs. The second inefficiency of VV ECMO support is called recirculation, which is the inadvertent diversion of oxygenated or arterialized ECMO blood flow to the venous cannula in a partial closed loop resulting in loss of ECMO efficiency. This diversion of highly oxygenated ECMO blood back to the venous cannula will cause the SVO2 in your reading on your ECMO circuit to be falsely elevated. And in fact, clinically, what you may see at the bedside is the ECMO patient drainage tubing may become bright red with the patient, while the patient's SAO2 may begin to drop. Due to the respiratory disease in these patients, coupled with the inefficiencies of VV ECMO, it is likely that these patients will not have a normal SAO2 even during ECMO. Hypoxemia and VV ECMO shunt can be approached by optimization of the ECMO flow to cardiac output ratio. The shunt on VV ECMO is the amount of the patient's venous return that bypasses the ECMO cannula and circuit. This can result in a unique physiology that may seem counterintuitive. That is, if the patient's cardiac output increases, the result may be a lower arterial oxygen saturation. This is due to the decrease in the ECMO flow to cardiac output ratio, resulting in more shunting of deoxygenated blood at a constant ECMO flow rate. Similarly, a decrease in ECMO flow can also cause an increase in the relative shunt, also resulting in a lower arterial oxygen saturation. So how can hypoxemia and VV ECMO shunt be managed? One management strategy is to increase the ECMO circuit blood flow, thus increasing the ECMO flow to cardiac output ratio. This will increase the amount of oxygenated blood available to mix with deoxygenated blood in the right ventricle. However, an increase in ECMO flow may not be possible. Limiting factors include cannula size, intravascular volume, and ECMO circuit pressures. If the circuit pressures do not allow for more flow, an additional drainage cannula could be considered. A second strategy to cautiously consider for hypoxemia and VV ECMO shunt is management of an excessive or hyperdynamic cardiac output. Cautious management of an excessive or hyperdynamic cardiac output may result in a decrease in the shunt of deoxygenated blood by the ECMO circuit. Strategies may include avoiding hyperthermia and treating fever and sedation and analgesia if necessary. It's critically important to emphasize that although cardiac output optimization may result in an increase in arterial oxygen saturation, this therapeutic approach should only be utilized by physicians or a multidisciplinary team after careful consideration and monitoring by echo of the patient's cardiac function. 
Monitoring of the patient's tissue perfusion should also be performed, such as with lactate. Now moving on to recirculation. Remember that recirculation is the inadvertent diversion of oxygenated ECMO blood back to the drainage cannula, causing a loss of ECMO efficiency. While all patients on VV ECMO can have a small and inconsequential amount of recirculation, higher degrees are problematic and result in a significant decrease in SAO2 and an increased SVO2 in the ECMO drainage tubing. While this can be related to the rate of ECMO flow, it is often due to suboptimal cannula placement. The figure on the left shows a FEM-FEM cannulation configuration where the oxygenated blood returned to the patient is provided by a cannula that extends all the way to or near the right atrium. The drainage cannula must be kept more distal in the IVC to provide some distance be between the cannula tips. This increased distance diminishes the likelihood that oxygenated ECMO blood will be diverted into the venous cannula and instead flow into the right atrium, through the tricuspid valve, and into the right ventricle and pulmonary artery. The same is true for ephemeral drainage configuration with a return to the right internal jugular vein. In those two configurations, it is often ideal to keep approximately eight to 10 centimeters of distance between the cannula tips. The configuration on the right is a dual lumen, single site, right internal jugular vein cannulation. In this scenario, the distance between the drainage holes and the return holes is fixed. However, the oxygenated ECMO return blood is directional and can be pointed towards the tricuspid valve simply by rotating the cannula. If not pointed towards the tricuspid valve, blood becomes more turbulent in the right atrium and is more likely to be sent to the drainage holes. In addition to cannula position, there are several other causes of recirculation. Pump speed is one of those causes as there's generally more recirculation at higher ECMO flow rates. Another cause is cardiac output. There can be more recirculation with low cardiac output if less blood is pumped through the heart. The use of smaller drainage cannulas may also uh, cause more recirculation due to excessive negative pressure in the venous cannula. And lastly, interthoracic and intra-abdominal pressures can impede venous return to the heart, which may preferentially send blood to the drainage cannula. So what are the clinical considerations for hypoxemia on VV ECMO? Because shunted blood is being mixed with fully saturated ECMO blood, the arterial saturation of 97 to 100% may not occur until there is lung recovery. The AVO2 difference is important in these patients due to the lower than normal SAO2 but remember that the SVO2 from the ECMO circuit may be falsely elevated due to recirculation. So the clinical status of the patient must be closely monitored. For patients on VV ECMO, lactate can be utilized to monitor adequacy of oxygen delivery. VV ECMO and lung protective ventilation should be utilized for these patients to optimize SAO2 until lung recovery occurs, avoiding aggressive ventilation strategies. In summary, strategies for management of hypoxemia on BV ECMO include management of shunt, management of recirculation, and management of patient-specific issues. Thank you again for viewing this 8 and 8 series presentation, Hypoxemia on Venovenous ECMO, sponsored by the Society of Thoracic Surgeons.